Well, family and friends of Vincent and Geronda, we are assembled here today in the presence of God to assemble or to join this man and this woman in the holy estate of marriage. We know that marriage has been instituted of God, is regulated by his commandments, and is also blessed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let us therefore reverently remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and happiness of mankind, and therefore it is not to be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and ultimately in the fear of God. Our Lord has declared that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And he's also commanded through his apostles that those who enter into this relationship should love and cherish each other throughout their lives and they're to give each other strength and compassion and understanding. They're to bear with each other's infirmities and weaknesses and comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow. They're to provide for one another in temporal things and they're to pray and encourage each other in things pertaining to God, but ultimately to live together as heirs of his grace. Uh, since it's understood that these two people have come to this place to be made one in the holy relationship of marriage, if anyone could show any just cause, while the contracting parties may not be lawfully joined together in marriage, do now speak or forever hold your peace. <laughs> there will be no challenge today. <laughs> well, Wakanda forever, I guess. <laughs> And if either of you know any reason why you may not be lawfully joined together in marriage, uh, you do now make it known also. For should two people come together otherwise and in harmony with the will of God, their union is not blessed of him. All right. Well, Vincent, do you solemnly agree before God and these witnesses to take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to love and respect her, to honor and cherish her in health and in sickness, in prosperity and in adversity, forsaken all others to keep yourself only unto her, so as long as you both shall live. If this is your commitment, would you respond by saying, I do? I do. And Geronda, do you in like manner solemnly agree to receive this man to be your lawful wedded husband, to love and respect him, to live with him in all faith and in tenderness, in health and in sickness, in prosperity and in adversity, forsaken all others, to keep yourself only unto him, so as long as you both shall live. If this is your commitment, would you respond by saying, I do? I do. And who gives this woman to be married? I do. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Y'all can actually turn and face me for this portion. Y'all gonna be staring at each other for the rest of your lives. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say a few words to you before you do. Well, Vincent and Geronda, you're both aware that we live in a society and a culture that typically just invests a lot of time, energy, and resources in just a wedding ceremony. And then they spend little to no time, energy, or resources in the lifelong commitment of marriage that they'll share with one another. And today I must say that I'm extremely impressed and very proud because I know firsthand that while a lot has gone into this beautiful ceremony, you've also invested a lot of time, energy, and resources in your lifelong commitment of marriage that you'll share. So since today is just another milestone on your journey of life together, I want to charge you both with what scripture charges some of the first couples that entered into this relationship. In a book of Ephesians, in verse chapter 5, Paul gives some amazing advice to the Christians of his day that was entering into the marriage covenant. And I want to read a few verses for you. I'm not going to turn this into a sermon or anything like that. We'll save that for tomorrow. But uh, starting with verse 21, it says this, And further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church, as the church submits to Christ, so you wives submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church, without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. Here, Paul presents some imperatives that give us a very unique but distinct, uh, distinct but equal relationship. And that is that two of you are equal in value and worth to God, and you're also equally responsible 
for submitting to one another, but you're distinct in role and responsibility and you're distinct in what that submission looks like. So my prayer for you today, Vincent, is that you'll be willing to submit to Geronda um, through sacrificial love. So much so that should God choose to bless you with any sons, that they will see in you the type of godly man that they will one day strive to become. And should God choose to bless you with any daughters, that they will see in you the type of godly man that they will one day choose to marry. My prayer for you is that at the most difficult times of your marriage, you will wrestle with a very simple but yet profound question. And that question is this, what would the most loving husband in the world do at this moment? I believe that if you answer that question correctly, you will fulfill God's call in your life in this season of being a husband. And my prayer for you today, Geronda, is that you'll be willing to submit to Vincent um, by submitting to his leadership. Now, I know submission is a word that's been misused and abused in our society as it relates to women, but if we was to look at submission in a biblical sense, submission is simply an invitation to lead. And so my prayer for you is that your love for him will invite him to lead your household. I pray that at the most difficult times of your marriage that you will also wrestle with a very simple but yet profound question. And that question is this, what would the most respectful wife in the world do at this moment? I believe if you answer that question correctly, you will feel God's call on your life in this season of being a wife. I want the two of you to know that when it matters the most, when it matters the most, your commitment to the vows you're getting ready to exchange will help you to break the trend of our culture and you too will have a marriage that will last a lifetime. Amen. With that said, why don't y'all turn and face each other now? Yeah. Holding hands. <laughs> Vincent, we're going to begin with you as you stare deeply into Geronda's eyes. <laughs> Would you repeat after me? I, Vincent, take you, Geronda. I, Vincent, take you, Geronda. <laughs> <laughs> to be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. God be my help. God be my help. All right. And Geronda, would you also repeat after me? I, Geronda, take you, Vincent. I, Geronda, take you, Vincent. To be my wedded wife. Husband. To be my wedded husband. Husband. <laughs> Let's get that straight. That was husband. A, that was the other ceremony. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, let's start over. <laughs> I, Geronda, take you, Vincent. I, Geronda, take you, Vincent. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. God be my help. God be my help. All right. In addition to the traditional vows, the couple is also elected to share some vows that are more personal to them. And Vincent, we're going to begin with you. All right. I remember mine, so it's all good. Uh, <laughs> I, Vincent, vow to always seek God first, but through everything, through every decision, through every uh, turn in life that may happen, um, though that will happen. Um, to, sorry, I get a little nervous. <laughs> um, I always, uh, I always get a little turned up. <laughs> <laughs> I practice as a man <laughs> um, and to always seek God first through every every decision we make um, to for for through every journey um, and <laughs> you got this. 
I always I vow to be supportive and helpful uh, through everything, and I vow to whenever I sneak off to the Milk and Honey Cafe to uh, <laughs> to when I bring back your order that is correct and, <laughs> and, and what you asked for. <laughs> um, <laughs> I vow to be respectful um, and always honor you for three forevers. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to remember. <laughs> Vincent, I will honor and respect you, encourage you, and support you. I vow to pray for and with you and to keep Jesus at the center of our marriage. I vow to be a Proverbs 519 wife, forever your amorous queen. I will submit to you and follow your vision for our family. I will work to make our home a place that radiates God's joy and peace and love. I vow to grow our friendship, which means more freestyle remixes <laughs> and <laughs> extremely loud laughter. <laughs> and we tend to smack downs mm -hmm. with you on the losing end. <laughs> <laughs> on this journey of approaching the Proverbs 31 bar that Jesus set for me, I vow to make mistakes many, many mistakes, <laughs> and I will give you grace to do the same. Together, we will learn from them and bounce back better than ever. Vincent Dion Docket, I vow to love you, to serve you, and to fight for us and our family together for three forevers. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I believe there are rings. <laughs> Lord, would you make these rings the outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual bond that would unite this man and this woman in endless love. Vincent, as we begin with you, as you take this ring, place it on Geronda's left hand, would you repeat after me? I give this ring to you. I give this ring to you. As a token of the covenant. As a token of the covenant. Made between us this day. Made between us this day. And as a pledge of our mutual love. And as a pledge of our mutual love. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Geronda, would you also repeat after me as you place that ring on Vincent's left hand? I give this ring to you. I give this ring to you. As a token of the covenant. As a token of the covenant. Made between us this day. Made between us this day. And as a pledge of our mutual love. And as a pledge of our mutual love. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, oftentimes at wedding ceremonies, there are a lot of people gathered to celebrate the couple at their highest moment, but then they're nowhere to be found when life gets tough for the couple. And so you're here today not only to celebrate them, but to also hold them accountable of the vows they just exchanged, not to be involved in their marriage, but to remind them that it was on this day in July that they said, <laughs> for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, for rich or for poor, to death do us part. So as I pray a prayer of blessing over their marriage, would you just extend your hands towards them as your way of praying your blessing on them as well? Let us pray. Father of love and mercy, please show your compassion on this couple who have come before you in the presence of their family and friends to pledge themselves to live together in a holy estate of marriage. God, would you grant them the strength and the patience, the affection and the understanding, the courage and love to abide together in peace and mutual growth according to thine will for them both. It is through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. 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 As we prepare to end today's ceremony, at the conclusion, the couple will jump the broom, uh, which signifies the uh, sweeping away of their lives as individuals and the blending together as their new life is one. As a tradition, traditionally in our country, slaves weren't permitted to uh, be married, and so they jumped the broom to signify the transition 
of their independent lives into their new lives together. So they will honor that tradition together as they conclude today's ceremony. Well, it's by the authority committed unto me as a minister of the gospel that I declare that Vincent and Geronda are now husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> According to the ordinance of God and the law of the state, God having joined these two together in marriage, let no man seek to dissolve this union. Well, Vincent, you may kiss your bride.